going for a jog outside. But have you noticed that different animals move in different ways? Birds flap their wings and fish use their fins and tail to move. But what about animals that don't have feet, wings or fins? Like this snail. But do you know how a snail moves? Let's find out. How does it work? how snails move, I've come to a snail garden. This is Chris and it's his job to look after the snails. He's going to show us a few different types of snails so we can find out how they move. Some snails are really small, like this one. It's called a pond snail. And that's because they live in ponds. And some snails are really, really big, like this giant African land snail. Wow! Oh, it's almost as big as my hand. Now, here's a snail you might have seen before. It's called a garden snail. And garden snails like to live in wet, muddy places, like this. Listen to the sound my feet make in the mud. It's really squelchy. Let's get a closer look at this garden snail. Snails have four tentacles. Two to see with and two to smell with. And they have a hard, round shell. This protects the snail's soft body. This part of the snail is called its foot. And can you see this slimy trail? Well, that slimy stuff is called mucus. And the snail uses it to help it glide along. But how does the foot and the mucus work together to help the snail move? To find out, I think we need to take a closer look. When a snail moves, it uses lots of muscles inside the foot to push itself along. In the foot is a gland that makes mucus. The mucus makes the surface slippy, which makes it easier for the foot to move along because there is less friction. Born with a shell on its back, it's called a protoconch, and it's very soft. The shell needs calcium from food to make it strong. As the snail grows, so does the shell. The new shell pushes the old shell along and becomes harder, making a spiral. The hard shell protects the snail's body and the organs inside. The heart, the lungs, and the stomach. When the snail sees danger, it hides inside the shell and only comes out when it's safe again, before sliding along on its way. That was amazing, but now I've got something very special to show you. These are baby snails. Look at the shell, the protoconch. At the moment, the shell is still very thin. That's because the snail hasn't eaten lots of food with calcium in it yet to make the shell hard. And can you see the slippery mucus underneath the baby snail's body? When something's slippery, we say that it has less friction. A bit like this. If I rub my hands together, friction stops them from moving too quickly. But if I add some hand lotion, look, the slippery lotion, makes it much easier to move them back and forward, just like the snail's foot and the slippery mucus help the snail to move forward. But to understand how the foot and the mucus work together, I think we should use one of my special cameras. Chris has put a garden snail on a clear sheet and I've attached this to my special camera. It's called a probe lens and it's going to help us see underneath the snail's foot in more detail. Okay, Chris. Wow, that is all of the mucus. And I can see it there. <laughs> it makes the surface slippery so it's easier for the snail to glide along. This is incredible. But a snail needs more than mucus to move. Can 
you see the snail's body ripples as it moves forward? Those ripples are the snail's muscles working to help it move. The snail is squeezing and relaxing its muscles over and over. Wow, this was incredible. Thank you, Chris. It's time to put the snail back where he found it. That was brilliant. I loved finding out about how snails move. What was your favourite part? Can you remember the name of the flat part of the snail? That's right, it's called a foot. Do you remember the sound my feet made in the mud? And did you see the waves the snail's muscles made on my special camera? snail moves was really interesting. When we move along different surfaces, we need different things to help us. On water, we need to use a boat. When we go ice skating, we wear ice skates. When we want to get across a big field, we might use a tractor. But do you know how a tractor is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Find out how tractors are made. I've come here to a tractor factory. Wow, there are so many machines here. It is really busy. I can't believe they make a tractor every four minutes. That's the same as 15 tractors every hour. <laughs> tractors do lots of clever jobs. Some pull big ploughs to get the fields ready for planting seeds. This tractor helps to collect potatoes. Look at this tractor. It's lifting up recycling bins. Today, the factory are making a huge blue tractor, just like this one. Wow, look at the size of it. And look how big those wheels are. They're massive. So how do they make a tractor that's this big? we need to make a tractor is this. It's called a transmission. A transmission makes sure the right amount of power goes to the wheels so the tractor can move faster or slower. But the transmission is really heavy, so they use a crane to lift it up and put it on one of these. It's called an AGV, an auto-guided vehicle. It's controlled by a computer and moves around automatically. It drives itself. Off it goes. There are lots and lots of AGVs carrying things around the factory. Can you see the orange flashing lights? They are to warn people that it's moving. They look so funny moving around by themselves. The transmission is brought to this bay where an engine is fitted to it and it slides on perfectly. This is the next part to be fitted. It's called a front axle. You see it's got two metal discs. One, two. What do you think this might be used for? That's right, it's where the wheels are going to be attached. The front and back axles are then connected to the engine and transmission and all together it's now called the chassis. This is the base of the tractor. The chassis gets lifted up onto this huge line of moving chassis. It's like a fun ride, but for tractor parts. I'm going to call it a chassis coaster. So we can take a ride on the chassis coaster. Sue is attaching one of my special time-lapse cameras so we can see what happens really quickly. Ready to go? Whoa! Look how big this factory is. It's huge. Can you see the people working on the chassis? The fitting parts to help the engine move the wheels. The chassis coaster has stopped. And now we're off again. There's over 3,000 parts in a tractor that need to be added. A tractor is used to pull and lift really heavy things. And to do that, this part is added. It's called a front linkage and it helps the tractor to lift things at the front. This linkage connects to forks to help the tractor lift big bales of hay. Next, the chassis queue up here, ready to get spray painted by robots. Paint comes 
comes in through pipes and up to a spray gun at the end of the robot's arm. Can you see how quickly they're working? The robots are painting the first coat. It's called Primer. <laughs> Look at the robots. It's like they're doing some kind of dance. Can you dance like a robot? <laughs> takes two hours to dry and go hard inside this big oven. Then the chassis gets painted again. It's called the top coat. And the top coat is electromagnetically charged, which means it works a bit like a magnet. The paint is attracted to the metal of the chassis and it sticks. This makes the top coat of paint really tough. another visit to the oven to dry the top coat, the chassis moves on to the assembly line. And one of my special cameras has been attached, so we can take it for another ride. Look, now they're adding lots of electrical wires to the chassis. They'll help the tractor plants work together. It's like a giant 3D jigsaw puzzle. The chassis is now ready for the exciting part, the tractor cabs. This is where the driver sits. Wow, the cab is lowered onto the chassis and then it's fixed in place using bolts. It's enormous! It's really starting to look like a tractor now. And here's the bonnet. That will cover the engine. Finally, it's time for the wheels. And it's Daniel's job to fix them in place using large bolts. is ready. Wow, look at that! Finished blue tractor. That was amazing. I loved finding out how a tractor is made. What was your favourite part? Can you remember the name of the base of the tractor? That's right, it's called the chassis. Did you hear the drilling sound when the wheels were fixed on? Did you see lots of people adding parts to the chassis when we rode the chassis coaster? Whoa! So the next time you see a tractor moving around with its huge wheels, you'll know how it was made. And now you know how a snail moves along the ground. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things